If you've looked into compositing at all, you've probably heard the term mat, but what the heck does mat mean? What is a mat? Is it short for Matthew? <laughs> Here I have a render from Unreal Engine, and it's not that important that this is actually a render because this is actually applicable in a ton of different situations. But let's say that for whatever reason, we want to change this sky. We want to put some clouds in it or something like that. What we would want ideally is for all of these things to be on different layers, and then we can just change the sky in the background and we wouldn't have to worry about, you know, tracing all these things out, putting the sky behind things and everything. Because if we have just a flat render, or if this was a shot from just a camera, Camera, you aren't going to have all those layers like you would in something like Photoshop or whatever. So how in the world do we accomplish something like this where we put some kind of thing behind other stuff in post-production? The answer is that we make a mat. So I'm going to bring up a mat for our sky. And if we look at this kind of side by side, this should look a little bit familiar. The white part is everything that's kind of blue over here. And then we have our cliffs, this little thing here, and our cliffs on the right. And then, of course, the silhouette of our ship. And so it kind of looks like a silhouette. And if we're wanting to select our sky, our sky is going to be what's white. And everything that's not our sky is going to be black. And so this is just a map for our image to tell Fusion what we want to affect and what we don't want to affect. The things that we want to affect are white, the things that we don't are black. So using this mat, we can do all kinds of magic. For instance, I can change this sky to a more interesting sky with clouds, and I don't have to trace out anything. It all works very well. That's because all of the tracing and all the fancy things have already been done for me by the mat. Okay? Now, on this particular one, we also have this background ship that you might have been wondering, why isn't that in the mat? And that's because this is actually broken up with another mat and made into a layer and pasted in afterwards. But what we're really doing here is we're taking this sky and we're pasting it over our background image with just these shapes cut out. So it looks like things are in front of it, but the sky is actually in front of these foreground objects. It's just cut out perfectly around them, which kind of blows my mind. But there's so much magic you can do with a mat. So how do we make a mat? Well, it's the same way that you would create a black and white image. There are a few different ways to do it. One is you can create one with a key of some kind, like a green screen. Anytime that you do a green screen, what you're essentially doing is making a mat and it gets rid of the green and turns it black on this map and your subject will be white. And then it uses that to kind of cut out your image. You could also draw this yourself with shapes. If you have something like a bright sky in the background with kind of a darker foreground, which isn't the case here, but is the case for a lot of, you know, overcast skies and things like that, something like a shot like this, you could do something like adjust the brightness and contrast of this so that everything in this image looks dark except for the brightest part, which is the sky. And then you can use that as a mat. And that's really good for stuff like trees and things where there's a lot of detail. If it's something like this, where you're trying to just adjust a car separately or put something behind a car, something that isn't as detailed on the edges, you could certainly just create your own mask with your normal kind of masking tools and make a mat that way. You could also select things with the magic mask in Fusion which is pretty wild. You can just kind of draw on something and it'll do a pretty good job of cutting this out for you and creating a mat that way. So if you have real footage, you can do that and it does a pretty darn good job. It's pretty, pretty wild. Definitely a reason to get the studio version of Resolve because once you have a nice mat, you can do all kinds of magic on this thing. But if you have a CG render, you can actually render mats out from your renderer, whether it's Blender or Unreal or whatever you have. So we have several different mats that we're using. Here's a map from the background ship. Here's a map for the sky. And it lets us break out and isolate these elements so that I can do stuff like put a ship back in and get rid of stuff and change its rotation, edit things kind of by itself, which is really, really helpful if you need to fix problems in post without re-rendering. So that's kind of a little intro to mats. Mats are like the single most useful thing when it comes to compositing. So if you are rendering 3D, make sure to try and render mats so that you can use them in Fusion. And don't forget all the magical things that can happen. It's a world of wonder. I would say. Hey, if you want to get a little bit deeper into compositing, we have a class for that. Make sure to check that out. There's a link in the description. And hey, uh, thank you for matting around with me. Is that a thing? Does that mean something bad? <laughs> I don't know.